if you're using a short sword, which is like so boring for a monk. I don't know. You got to use the quarter staff, right? Right. No. Well, yeah. Come on. No, I'm, I'm anti weapons entirely for monks. <laughs> you should be punching people. You should be punished that until 11th level. <laughs> yes. It's role playing a certain level of ascetism. Define the word for some <laughs> listeners right. who might not know it. Because that's yes, just you just, are just resisting the, the urge. Don't know it. We know it. You are resisting the <laughs> urge to take this big damage that you are offered. Okay, you are living this pure life <laughs> of one d fours and one d sixes. Well, welcome everyone to Monsters in Multiclass. I'm Kevin Odie. I'm Jared Bornigal. And I'm Will Melvin. And on this episode, we are taking a look at a couple of the monk changes in Tasha's Cauldron of Everything. First, the optional class features, and then the Way of Mercy subclass. So let's dive into it. So today we are talking about the monks from Tasha's. Uh, monks are often viewed as one of the worst classes in 5th edition, especially after Rangers got some changes in Tasha's that were like a, a really big class overhaul. Uh, but they sit in this really weird space where they're not the best at damage and all of their stuff relies on a resource that drains extremely quickly. Uh, but there's definitely some some new features here in Tasha's, some optional class features as they're called. And let's see if it gives a, a uh, jump up like it does with the Ranger, starting with Dedicated Weapon. So... You train yourself to use a variety of weapons as monk weapons, not just simple melee or short swords. Whenever you finish a short or long rest, you can touch one weapon, focus your key on it, then count the weapon as a monk weapon until you use this feature again. The chosen weapon must meet these criteria. It has to be a uh, simple or martial weapon. You have to be proficient in it, and it has to lack the heavy and special properties. What do we think? I think it's a nice quality of life adjustment. Uh, it just kind of opens up a little bit. It's lacking the heavy, heavy and special isn't going to be like groundbreaking. Yeah, you're not going to be able to do anything crazy here sure. with it. Um, we're not going to see like a two end. We're not going to see great sword monks anytime soon, right? Unless you're the the Kenzai, right? I think they can. Yeah, they, yeah. Or, I forget actually yeah. what their limitations are. Yeah, but so it doesn't like completely step on what makes Kenzai special with um, monk weapons, like being able to do like a two-handed quarter staff as a D8 anyways. So it's not like all of a sudden they now have access to a D8 damage dice. I think the biggest thing is this just opens up some magic weapons. You're not stuck in giving them like a short sword or a quarter staff or a magic weapon. Sure. It also you helps. Give them some other things as well. It helps multi-classing a little bit as well. Mm -hmm. Not a ton by any means. And, you know, Monks just aren't great to multi-class with in general. Uh, but at least this way, if right. you already have the proficiency, then you get that boost. Uh, and checking on Kenzai, it does not have the heavy or special limitation. Also, it gives you right. proficiency with that weapon. So this is more of like making up for, if you're proficient in it, being able to still make it a monk weapon. Right. Uh, I do wonder how often... With this, we'd see uh, more monks using, like, bows and, and crossbows and such. Uh, it officially falls under the criteria of a martial weapon, so if you have the proficiency, you can use it. It generally only works for Kensai, because they get a couple of things added to their ranged attacks. Right. I, well, does it allow ranged? So it says... what. Why would it call out it? It has land. It must be a simple or a martial weapon. Sure, because that that's literally everything then, unless yeah. ranged or separate. Because they do have separate categories: simple ranged weapons, simple martial wep or martial ranged weapons. Right? No, yeah, they uh, they're not very separate. No, they're they're in the same little box there. So it should be. Otherwise, it would specify a simple melee weapon and a uh, martial melee weapon. Which it doesn't. But what's weird, though, that it says simple or martial, as opposed to what? Yeah, that, that's what I'm saying. Literally every weapon in the game is one of those two. I don't know. Right? Yeah, just a little weird. No, see, so yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Simple melee weapons, simple ranged weapons, martial melee weapons, martial ranged weapons. Yeah, it's confusing. <laughs> <laughs> but regardless you know I, I believe this does allow for for the range i don't see any reason why it wouldn't right is there a benefit 
probably not not really yeah uh i guess it probably says it because so you're not doing like an improvised weapon if you pick up like a table oh. like that's yeah. not a simple or a martial weapon it's an improvised sure. weapon and they don't want you to be making that a monk weapon It'd be kind of neat though if you could just like make a monk weapon out of anything yeah the jackie chan subclass <laughs> <laughs> i was an underrated cartoon <laughs> the adventures of jackie chan not all of the yes. movies that he's put out it's just the cartoon the cartoon was pretty good though i i liked it <laughs> but, yeah the question is where are these proficiencies going to come from in day-to-day play um you've got feats you've got a handful of racial Rach- abilities yeah. that very right. i mean that's very <clears throat> limited and then multi-classing yeah, that's probably the big thing. So multiclassing, not not a ton, but yeah. If it yeah, comes, I don't up, feel like really strongly about this. I don't like hate it. It's fine that it's there. It's little disappointed that it rules out special because that means we can't make nets a uh, monk weapon. Yeah, so no monks whip Nettington. <laughs> whips and <laughs> whips and nets and whips and karate nets. whips Nettington. I think somebody built that in our, our Whips Nettington competition. They did a Kensai, though, and chose the net. Mm-hmm. Mad respect. Mad respect. Yeah, <laughs> uh, yeah it, It's just a really elaborate way to rephrase, like, if you multi-class, you're not screwed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Except for you still kind of are, because you still can't but touch you, a shield yeah. or wear armor. <laughs> your like, keyboards are still screwed. really limited, yeah. It would probably work better for I, barbarians. Barbarian monk multi-class? Sure. Rogue monk multi-class, maybe? I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah, because then like a rogue could yeah, grab, yeah, like a rapier or something. And... Sure. So they get... No, short sword's finesse too, isn't it? So that's... Short sword is, but it's 1d6. Right. So, okay, they get an extra average of one more damage. <laughs> that is literally <laughs> game-breaking. <laughs> All right, next up is the key-fueled attack. If you spend one key, oh, sorry, this is a third level feature. If you spend one key or more as part of your action on your turn, you can make one attack with an unarmed strike or a monk weapon as a bonus action before the end of the turn. So this isn't huge at all. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, it's a little odd one. The thing that I actually just picked up on, it's an unarmed strike or a monk weapon. So that is actually better damage for the first like 10 levels of monk until your uh, martial arts die outpaces your monk weapons normal damage, uh, which as we're just saying, okay, usually yeah. like a, a D6, a D8 takes a while to get there. Uh, so if you like use a stunning strike on your attack action, then you just get to use your actual weapon for your bonus action attack. It raises the damage of the monk's a little bit yeah just a real little bit because but then it ties it to a resource of key sure uh, just in case anyone's not aware that the core monk thing of martial arts allows them to when they take the attack action as a bonus action make an unarmed strike and they could just always do that right there's no resource tied to it and then yeah the unarmed attacks start as a d4 and they go up d6 d8 so on at various various thresholds so, yeah, I mean, I guess if you take the attack action, but all you do is, like, grapple, at Raw, you then would not be able to do an unarmed strike. But now with this, you could, as long as you manage to somehow find a way to spend a key on that grapple, and I don't know how you would do that. No. No, I think the... There is a handful of subclass abilities that are very... Yeah. This doesn't make sense at all to me. Oh, okay. I remember this coming out. When I was playing a semi-high level monk and just being baffled of its existence entirely. <laughs> so I this think is... it's specifically, it's good for the two subclasses and Tasha's. They have various abilities where as an action, spend key and do this and it's not an attack. This then allows them to keep attacking while doing their other stuff. Yeah, and I think it, it helps out low level monks because what i was saying where it it will give them the ability to use their bonus action to make a weapon attack instead of their unarmed strikes the unarmed strikes are significantly weaker until 
I think it is level 10 or 11 or something. It goes up to eight. Mm-hmm. It, it takes a while. Uh-huh. And you were, you were level 14 or so. So you were at the point where it no longer helped you. Uh, the other subclass that it helps, Way of the Four Elements. Because <laughs> there's no help. Oh, okay. they, they do a lot of, as an action, spend a key to cast a spell. Okay. Yeah. And then they get their bonus That's action a really to good strike. Point. Yeah. I know no you're shaking your head at me, place. and I, it's it it needs a it, lot it more a, help than that. Yeah, but it's a low boost. Yeah. So yeah, yeah they get. Uh, go ahead. Yeah, un- unarmed strikes go up to D, the martial arts die goes up to D six at fifth level and D eight at eleventh. Yeah. So your weapon's so, yeah. outpacing it for a while. Yeah. If you're using a quarter staff, because that's like the most right. common is a two handed quarter staff. That's a D eight. Uh, a rapier, as we just said, will be a D8. If you're using a short sword, which is like so boring for a monk, I don't know. You got to use the quarter staff, right? Right. No. Well, yeah. Come no, on. I'm, I'm anti weapons entirely for monks. <laughs> you should be punishing people. You should be punished <laughs> until <works> 11th level. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yes. Thank you. We'll finally figure out how to balance the monk. It's to just completely take away any damage capabilities it's role-playing a certain level of ascetism define the word for some <laughs> listeners right. who might not know it because that's yes, just you just, are just resisting the, the urge don't know it. we know it you are resisting the <laughs> urge to take this big damage that you are offered okay are living this pure life <laughs> of 1d4s and 1d6s <laughs> Balanced out by your ability to get an extra attack as a bonus action. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, okay. So next up is quickened healing. So as an action, you can spend two key points and roll a martial arts die, which is the one that we're saying goes up with your levels. You regain a number of HP equal to the number rolled plus your proficiency bonus. I I think this is bad. Very bad. It's too expensive for such a small amount of health. Exactly. At low levels, it's nowhere near enough HP because we're talking about, what, two key points to get 1d4 plus two healing until level five, then it's 1d6 plus three. As a whole action and two key points? No way. No way. The only thing this goes with is short rests. Sure. Before your short rest... This Just is a good way up, yeah. to burn up your key. If you still have key, I don't How? know what you were doing. How do you still have key? How did you do it? <laughs> right, it goes so fast. Yeah, this does trigger the key fuel strikes though. Attacks the previous one, so you do this and then yeah. you still get a bonus action attack. You are correct. <laughs> you know, I can see during combat in a pinch mm-hmm. doing it. like you're slugging it out with an enemy and you're both really low, and so you do this to get a bit of health. And if you're like second level, that could be half your health <laughs> that you get back. Uh, it like, doesn't I mean, think. Can't use it till fourth. Oh, you're right. Yeah, okay. it's fourth level. So that Still, I is, mean, yeah. that's only 1d4 plus two. You get six HP. That's probably a quarter of your health. Uh, it's right. situation. And that's, yeah, that, and that's that assuming you roll a four. Yeah. And when we're looking at high levels, it's just not worth your entire action because you're able to do so much with one action. The idea of even taking a d10 plus a proficiency bonus of like six. Six. That's yeah. 11 HP for a whole action. No way. Never going to get used. In the middle of combat, no. 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 At but the end, yeah, as a way to yeah, just dump it and heal yourself up before short rests. Yeah. I just don't think that's what I've been missing from monks, though. I haven't been thinking right. like, oh, man, if I could only just find a way to give myself health more often. It's, right. not, it's not really like the, the downside of the class. Uh, I think yeah. what I would rather is if they added, as an action, roll a martial arts die and regain that many key once per long rest. Now that ability I'd use. Yeah, just a way to get it back. Okay. Yeah, because they get it back on short rest, but I think that's probably one of the biggest complaints is that they just can burn through key so quickly. And then once mm-hmm. they're out, it's like, that's it. You suck now. All right, next is focused aim. So this is at fifth level. When you miss with an attack roll, you can spend one to three key points to increase your attack roll by two for each of the key points you spend, potentially turning the miss into a hit. Um, I'm torn on this one. It's always nice to be able to do that and trigger it when you know already know that you missed and you kind of know what you rolled. 
Um, it would really suck though, where you spend all three key points and it's still not enough because you misjudged the AC. But I think that's probably pretty rare. You could get a good sense of it. Yeah. Especially if the DM's lenient, where it's like, all right, I spend one key point. Does it hit? No. All right, second key point. Yeah, okay, that one hits. Where you that's, can let him do a one at a time. That's a nice way to I'd, play I'd, it. I, I, I don't would think like that's that. the intent, but you know, I'd maybe let them do that. No, it's not the intent. I'm yeah mildly surprised, like very, very mildly, that they didn't just do what they did with the the rogue subclass. I don't. I think it's the. I forget which one it is. The psionic one, where if you you can add your psionic, and if it doesn't, oh, the, the hit, psionic, yeah, yeah, add, if yeah. It do, if it doesn't succeed, then you don't spend it. Right, but like that's. I already think that's really, really nice like too nice for the rogue <laughs> subclass i get kind of nervous about adding that but i could see something along those lines i like what you said of just as the dm being nice about it and being like your key right. are very important and you obviously want to hit another one come on nope make it three make it three yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> um what i don't like about it though is the monk usually doesn't have individual big hits their whole thing is they do a lot of little hits and so being able to turn the tide on one of those is not as impactful as, say, like a rogue or a sure. paladin or Very something true. like that. A great it, weapon master. You fighter. know what I like about it? Hmm. It lets you spend key <laughs> so that the enemy can pass your stunning save checks. <laughs> it's like, oh, I was going to burn key on a stunning strike, but I missed. So I'm going to burn key. To waste this key on a stunning strike. <laughs> yes. So that's definitely another problem of the monks is their big helpful thing is that stunning strike. And it is very much a save or suck ability. Right. Yeah. Fifth level ability. After you hit an opponent, you could choose to spend one key and you force them to make a con save. If they fail, they are stunned until the end of your next turn. Sure. Stun being they can't take actions and stuff like that and attacks against them have advantage yeah, have advantage yeah so you know i that one's so difficult because they made such a powerful ability and almost everything has good constitution saves i mean you're not going to find you're not frequently going to find a monster that has like a negative one to con saves just doesn't happen uh, because of this reason and if you just allowed stunning strike to go off every single round it wouldn't it would it would break the game. I mean, it's it's so oh, yeah. good. So <laughs> the ability to you right. know do it every single time against multiple creatures, it's ridiculous. So it makes for a very disappointing ability when you just keep, as Will is describing here, dumping key into this one thing that you need to succeed, and it just fails, mm-hmm. fails, fails. This right. is an extension of the key vacuum. So like, it's when you're a high level caster. You can't, you cannot get your shit off fast enough. Right. But with a monk, you can spend key to spend key, and now you can <laughs> spend more key during that process. <laughs> right. But, like, when it works, it's worth it. When you, you know, raise it by, we'll say, one or two, you spend a key point to make the attack hit, and then the attack hits and you use your stunning strike, you just change the entire course of the battle. It's that good. It really is. Mm -hmm. Again, stunning a creature for an entire round until the end of your next turn is, it's frustrating. It's one of the worst abilities to have against as a a DM, because you're just like, what do I do? I failed. This, This creature just sucks now. It can't take legendary actions even. It just, it's got nothing. You know what this does, though? You can almost spend all of your key in one go. That's what I've been looking for. Finally. <laughs> Before, you could only spend about like five or so. Now you can spend like 18. Yeah, because if every single hit would miss and you just dump three key points into it to bump each, that up right. and a stunning strike on each of them and just keep right. failing and every flurry. This is a flurry of blows. Stunning blows. strikes. Yeah. <laughs> every single miss. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, it can straight up be two turns and you're just done. And, right. you know, at the end of the day, I, I feel like we're just, we're going to constantly disagree on this, Will. That is what I like about monks. I like that resource management. It's like, It's fun to me to realize I've got all this stuff that I could blow immediately, but instead I have to like pick and choose and like trickle it out. 
that it's enjoyable. I like monks. <laughs> I actually think it's one of the Sorry. better classes for doing that. It just is kind of brutally difficult. Right. And <laughs> it, it blows up in your face so often. It's just, oh. So I, I was laughing because at D and D really common people play for like the power fantasy. I mean the crazy heroes and going Nova and blasting shit and doing all these really cool big turns. And here you guys, oh, I really like to be able to have to rein myself in yes. and like be responsible yeah. with my resources. That's we're double nerds, <laughs> right? I was saying, what, no, what I kind of like. What do you? It has a nice little extra layer challenge. What are you talking about? Playing for the power <laughs> fantasy? I play D and D so that the I can just constantly be stepped on. I'm just like, no, you're not good enough. Sorry. <laughs> it makes succeeding that much better. And that's right. where it really comes from is I, I don't want, I don't want to be the rogue who just does 800 damage on the first turn and just kills everything well, and then goes high. I mean, that's fun too. It's sure, Kevin. Sure. It's fun. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> um, all right, let's let's move on. I think that's that is all of the optional features. I don't think there's anything just like totally game changing, and the way that there was with the ranger, where it's like replacing features. This is all just mm-hmm. little add-ons to make the first five levels of monk feel a little bit better, uh, which was right. necessary. So you, the first yeah. five levels suck. So let's move on to our monastic traditions, starting with Way of Mercy. Another edgy death class. Yes! Good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's it's a pretty damn edgy version of a monk. Uh, but honestly, right. I think it's pretty cool. It's kind of like a field yeah, medic. I, I like it, yeah. It's just, we've talked about it before. There's a lot of subclasses where it's like, this is the version of the class where they like facilitate the transfer of life and death and decide who goes and who doesn't. So yeah. it's, this is the- they're all of little different flavors and all of that, but this is still in that vein. <laughs> but yeah, yeah, it's basically yeah, a medic. Uh, generally they I guess described in the flavor are part of like a religious order uh, administering to the needy and making grim choices rooted in reality rather than idealism uh, so as as Kevin was saying it is the the edgy death one uh, but right. their their first ability here is implements of mercy so they gain proficiency in insight and the medicine skills and gain proficiency with the herbalism kit they also, Gain a special mask, ooh, which you often wear when using the features of this subclass. And that is a, a deceiving <laughs> sentence there because it never comes up again. Never comes up again. <laughs> when, when they said that, I was like, I was like, oh, okay. I think the mask thing's kind of dumb, but like, all right, fine. Um, let's, let's see how it's used. Yeah, yeah, let's see how it's used. No, not once. <laughs> all right, not boys. Once. Are you more of a laughing visage, a crying visage, a skull, or a butterfly? I'm um, actually more of a raven. <laughs> oh yeah, raven. I was thinking about this actually. I don't know why I was like googling the plague and reading the Wikipedia <laughs> about the plague last night. But I was thinking like, in a world where they had magical healing, would they have needed to fill the nose of these masks with <laughs> lavender in right. a failed attempt to stop germs? They just didn't, or as they called it, miasma. They literally just didn't like stinky stuff. That's it. <laughs> like, that's the only reason. These monks, at least. Like, yeah, I just, I don't know. I stuff it with vanilla. Wouldn't you? Why are you guys just smelling air all the time? People just shit right. and throw it in the streets. <laughs> like, what are you? <laughs> Why are you not wearing masks? Um, so I I definitely will say I, okay, let's, let's talk about the actual benefits first. Insight and medicine. Uh, very fitting. Good, mm-hmm. uh, good proficiencies to get. Out of combat stuff, that's cool. Herbalism kit, I don't think that's come up once in a game I've ever ran, ran or played in. Yeah, but I mean, if someone kind of forces it, it, it works. Sure. Um, I, there, yeah, there's the wandering physicians and they're going to have, maybe make some health potions and poultices and things like that. I think all you can do is make a healer's kit, actually. Is that it? <laughs> I'm. I, I mean, not like literally. That's it. Right. I'm sure there's some some benefits and such you can use it for in Xanathers, because uh, that added a lot around the kits. But right, yeah, you, know, you can't the make a healing exist, potion. But it's not good. <laughs> uh, so yes, and then you know it says that you you gain the special mask. As we said, it doesn't have any actual benefits. Uh, it doesn't affect your class in any capacity. I feel like. 
I'm just upset that they put it in at all as anything other than a suggestion. Because as it's written, right. you you have to have this mask. And I know, like, it's, yeah. it's obviously you can easily just say, no, I don't do the mask thing. And no one is going right. to argue with you. Uh, but but your DM should. <laughs> <laughs> what mask do you wear, cringe lord? Is it the butterfly? <laughs> You just bring like a a butterfly mask and just give it to them. You have to wear this when we play. You have to. (laughs) At the table, you have to wear this mask. (laughs) So yeah, I'm just I'm just not a fan when they like force flavor on you. Like, get out of here. I don't need a butterfly mask. Yeah, like in the uh like couple paragraphs of description could have said frequently wear a mask to hide their identity and the sense an executioner does or to protect against sickness. You know, right. and just like left it at that. It yeah, didn't need to be part of a third level feature of a table. It just I don't know. I We're just, probably giving this too hard of a time because it doesn't really matter. You can just skip no, it and move but, on or take but it. No, but no, no. This means that you don't get your mask until third level. <laughs> Which means for the first two levels, you're walking around maskless and then you hit third level and you're just like, oh, hey, I got my mask, guys. And everyone's like, right. where, where did that just come like, from? poof out of yeah. nowhere. <laughs> this is just cool ass raven mask. Finally, <laughs> I've killed enough goblins and cleared enough dungeons in order to earn my mask. <laughs> like, dude, you could have been wearing that the entire time. Right. <laughs> just been carrying that around. <laughs> Is this, is this what people tune in for, for us to make fun of really insignificant flavor choices? I, yeah, yes. I'm pretty <laughs> sure. <laughs> it is now. Welcome to the show. Next is Hand right. of Healing. Your mystical touch can mend wounds. Also third level. Also third level. Yes, that's very important. That's not all yes. they get at third level. They get a lot more. Uh, your yeah. mystical touch can mend wounds. As an action, you can spend one key point to touch a creature and restore a number of HP equal to a roll of your martial arts die plus your wisdom modifier. And when you use your flurry of blows, you can replace one of the unarmed strikes with a use of this feature without spending a key point for the healing. That's pretty cool. Yeah. yeah, that last line saves it. Yeah. Where, yeah, use flurry blows. You could get three attacks off and heal somebody nearby. Or yourself, I think. Yes, yes. Double check okay. that. It just says a creature. A creature, yeah. So it's pretty reliable healing. We were mm-hmm. just talking about how the two key points and an action for a martial arts die plus your proficiency bonus is awful. This is much more reliable and only costs one key point. And it's like just part of your turn as it is. Right. Right. Yeah. I don't know actually why you would ever. Okay. I guess if there's truly, if you really just need to get somebody up and there's no enemies around you, just spend the key point to heal them. I say, <laughs> cause if you are in battle, because like you would get the bonus action attack anyways, because of that new, uh, right. The key field attack object because you spend an action at a key point so you get a bonus action attack and like if you are going to take that just spend the key point on flurry of blows to get three attacks and healing but you could use this to when there's no enemies around and- sure but uh, on the other hand uh you could also just cast flurry of blows next to your down friend and just punch the ground three times in frustration <laughs> and then give them the healing <laughs> And it's the exact same resource cost. So say, yeah. that one, that one's free, guys. You can use yeah, that in your games. Great, great flavor, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So the ceiling is not insane. Um, it very much does feel like that field medic thing. Like somebody goes down and shit. Let me use my defibrillator hands to get them up. Basically, my magic defibrillators at this point. <laughs> it's also just steady healing. I mean, yeah. if you're you're up in the shit as the monk, uh, I just said earlier, it's like how often are you really starving for HP? Uh, but you know, maybe it's worth it where you're just, you're at half HP, you're tanking really hard this fight, and you just want to keep yourself up every time, use that flurry of blows. It's one key right. point, keep yourself alive, uh, or somebody next to you, either way. Right. If you don't want to keep people alive, you have your other option, hand of harm. So this, you use your key to inflict wounds. When you hit a creature with an unarmed strike, you can spend one key point to deal extra narcotic damage equal to one of your martial arts die plus your wisdom modifier. And you can only use this feature once per turn. Also third level. So we got our healing hand and we got our hand of harm. Yeah. So, I mean, it's a key for an extra attack, basically. 
damage wise plus wisdom yeah damage wise yeah yes later on this becomes really good because there's things that kind of enhance it and you could use it more frequently um i don't know i'm torn it's like right on the cusp for me like is that really worth the key monk smites this is when you hit a creature not before right. you hit the creature so if you crit you can spend that key. extra damage yeah okay yes yeah this this should crit so i <laughs> right <laughs> That's in, in reference yeah. to the, the, the <laughs> ranger. run into and this before with Tasha's. It's like, does this crit? This and one should. some reason, this should, I guess. Yeah. That is, it deal extra necrotic damage. Yes. yes. That is the Equal, keyword yeah. there. The extra, extra means that it is attached. Uh, yeah. So, so, I mean, yeah, that, that much makes it pretty worthwhile. But you're right. It gets better later on. For right, right. now, yeah. it's, it's and okay. Because like, your wisdom's not going to be that high. Uh, maybe even ever. Like, I could see wanting to focus on dex and constitution before wisdom. Though, if you're playing this, wisdom does come up a lot. So. Yeah, you now have a good reason to. That's a lot, actually, that you're putting on the table if you don't up your wisdom. That's healing right. and and this. Right. Yeah, this this kind of forces your hand. But it, it is all... This is At third level, you have three key points. Right. Right. And this this is a way that you just, like, ensure that you never have three key points. <laughs> It's right. just, it will be impossible to have that number of key points <laughs> for more than like 15 minutes. Yeah, for an extra 1d4 to... plus one or two damage. Yeah, it's... Okay, yeah, and it's, then even it's... back on Hands of Healing, like later on, I think it gets better. But but then again, never mind. You can use that for free with Flurry of Blows. That, that's why that one's okay. Because right. that's still also all 1d4 plus one or two, which is not a lot. But but I mean, let's let's be realistic here. Not too many characters are fantastic at third level. If we tried to look at their resources, it's like, what's the resources of a set or a third level wizard? They have what a first. <laughs> it lasts set. more than one turn. I right. say. Fair, fair. But they yeah. they can't punch all day. <laughs> no, that's true. And a fighter. How about that? A battle master. They have like what three maneuvers? Something like, like that. Superiority die. Yeah, Something superiority like die. It's not that many. They're burning through them too. And these are damage wise yeah. kind of the equivalent of superiority dice. I think superiority dice are a little better. They started at D six, not a D four. Right. Uh, but besides the point, you're you're right. You're gonna burn through it. I do wish there was still that ability of you know your to get some key points back mid fight instead of waiting for a short rest. But eh. Yeah. Oh, superiority dice start as D eights. They start as D8s? That's right. It's yeah. the feet. The feet is a D6 because they really wanted it to be confusing for everybody. And you start out with four. Okay. Nice. That's better than... This is dog yeah. shit. I take it back, guys. <laughs> <laughs> Every word. The monk is the worst class in the game. Minus the fact that they can just attack, you know, three times at second level. No other class can do that. That is... And then that's, that's it. Right. And that's it. For, for, wait. <laughs> uh, next up is Physician's Touch. So this is the sixth level ability. Can administer even greater cures with a touch. And if you feel it's necessary, you can use your knowledge to cause harm. Oh, just dripping with edge. Uh, when you use your hand of healing on a creature, you can also end one disease or one of the following conditions affecting the creature, blinded, deafened, paralyzed, poisoned, or stunned. And then you have the hand of harm. Uh, when you use hand of harm on a creature, you can subject the creature to the poison condition until the end of your next turn. Doesn't suck so anymore, the... does it? <laughs> uh, no, it's, it's, this flips it. Yeah. Um, yeah, being able to cure any of those conditions is really nice. Like paralyzed and stunned and stuff could be really... Pretty sure that's just lesser restoration. Too, yeah. Pretty much, yeah. yeah. I don't think there's anything missing. Uh, right. Yeah. And to be able to do that as part of your flurry of blows action where you get three attacks, then heal somebody of, at this point, it'd be 1d6 plus wisdom and cure one of these conditions. That's a pretty good turn. Yeah. They're not, they're not like you know, oh, I guess I'm grappled conditions either. They're like the worst. Blinded, yeah. blinded, paralyzed, poisoned, and stunned. All of all of those just suck. Right. Deafened, eh. I don't care. Yeah. <laughs> and then the hand of harm one we could uh, apply the poison condition. And there's no save. 
Yeah. Which is really nice. So if you hit, you get to do your 1d6 plus wisdom and poison them. And you can make really bad Four decisions like using Hand of Harm and Stunning Strike on the same attack so that you poison them <laughs> and make it so they can't attack at all. So Right, and then waste all your key points. Yeah, and, just blow and Make sure you do the plus three to boost up the... <laughs> make the make sure you yeah. fuck this up correctly. <laughs> uh, no, totally right, though. Very good. It makes the Hand of Harm a little bit easier to, to deal with. It's not just extra damage. Uh, the lack of save is, I think, a lot of times what I what I see the the monk missing. You know, as we're saying, is the stunning strike is either it succeeds and it's amazing, or it doesn't succeed and, well, just burn some key points for nothing. Uh, this is mm-hmm. a good middle ground where poisoned sucks. It's not the end of the world. They have ways to get advantage to negate the disadvantage. Yeah, the only thing I would say is a lot of creatures, monsters are immune to poison. I think that's, that's probably true. Most, one of the most common which is condition immunities which is probably good for for DMs cuz you know got to look out for them. Uh they can't just manipulate time and space whenever. Uh but <laughs> you know if if your boss is just getting disadvantage every single turn because the monk keeps using this, uh it's going to be kind of a mediocre fight. So right. I'm all right with it. Yeah, and I say by the time this happens, they can do it six times per short rest, and that sounds more reasonable. Yeah. All right, then Flurry of Healing and Harm. So you can now meet out a Flurry of Comfort and Hurt. When you use Flurry of Blows, you can now replace each of the unarmed strikes with a use of your Hand of Healing without spending key points for the healing. In addition, when you make an unarmed strike with Flurry of Blows, you can use your Hand of Harm with that strike without spending the key point for Hand of Harm. You can still use Hand of Harm only once per turn. So Flurry of Blows just got even better. Right. It'd just be this mix of... Hurting and healing. Uh, yeah. <laughs> that is the class. It's just hurting and healing. It is, yeah. yeah. Even its art is, it has, you know, it's two hands out like this, and one hand's got this, like, black, dark energy, and the other one, the light energy. And, yeah. yeah. Got to name each hand. <laughs> <laughs> Hurdy and Healy. <laughs> That's exactly what I was thinking. <laughs> this is my Hurdy and this is my Healy. <laughs> but like you just tell every enemy that and you just switch them up to catch them off guard. They think they're coming in with the heel. They're like, oh, that fist looks very Healy. And then boom, hit him with the hurt. Boom. Necrotic <laughs> damage out of nowhere. <laughs> uh this is extremely so by the powerful. Time you're, yeah, by the time you're 11th level, your martial arts, arts die is now D8. So that is a D8 plus wisdom modifier of healing per hit, uh, which at that point you're on par of like cure wounds. Right. Because uh, that's a D8 per plus, you know, whatever the casting thing is. Uh, and you can do that in theory four times. Right? Uh, you just fl- each of the unarmed each strikes. Unarmed no, strike. I guess the, the flurry of blow strikes would be your bonus action ones, because the flurry oh, of okay, blows so doesn't twice. affect everything. Got it. Yeah. So you can do it twice. Right. Still pretty good. I mean, again, we're talking yeah. about two d ten plus probably. 2D8. Oh yeah, sorry, two d eight plus probably like eight to ten from your wisdom modifier in healing if you need it. That's. Definitely worthwhile, right. even mid combat. For the cost of a key, yeah. for the cost of a key, uh, or again, just that free, free-ish uh, hand of harm, which uh, you could still do. One of the hand of harm, and then the hand of healing, like as your flurry of blows. So, right, yeah. Wow, no detailed analysis here, no breakdowns, just wow. <laughs> I don't know in a wow melee worthy. yo-yo situation, it's <laughs> it's it's absolutely brutal. If your tank Wait, is you like going down, for instance, in a melee encounter, you don't have to even pause what you're doing to keep bringing them back up. Right, right. It makes you which is very it, that's target. really powerful. Right. The only thing is, I would say it. I still think Healing Word outclasses this, which most casters get as a bonus action, so it's still not taking up their whole 
turn from 30 feet away can get someone up. Sure. Yeah. That's when you have to be up in melee range. You're spending key points, which are... But, I mean, healing with a spell slot. So, I guess that's kind of just... And, if you cast healing word, that means you're not getting a real spell off. You're only getting a cantrip off. That's true. Uh, Healing word is great. I mean, I'm not going to sit here and say, like, oh, healing word has its downsides. No, it's a fantastic (laughs) spell. Uh, But very different scenarios and... I don't know. This is just, it's a different kind of good. Right. Uh, I think you're right though, Kevin, the positioning is probably the biggest issue with this. You will probably find yourself in a lot of situations where you want to use a healing hand, but there just isn't really the opportunity to do so. Even with like monk movement and stuff like that, there it's not 30 feet range, you know, that's fair. Right. I think the, the only time where it's really a problem is if you're already engaged over on this side of the map and somebody goes down on this side of the map and you now have to break off from whatever you're fighting and run to the way, way other side, you can't... Can you disengage as a bonus action using a key? Well, even if you do, you then have to spend a key. (laughs) Yeah, it's... If you're not next to them already, it's going to be difficult to get over there. Where with Healing Word, you can stay where you're at and use your action for whatever and just pop that bonus action there's no stipulations so yeah it it works well if you already have another martial character that you're like you know we're we're jock bros together we're gonna be up in the shit together and if you go down i'm getting you back up bud this would have been great for the swole coast oh my god yes (laughs) i don't know how i would have flavored that i feel like it needs like a different like, it can't just be like, oh, yeah, this is my healy hand. This is my hurdy hand. You're like, spotting him, dude. You're <laughs> spotting him. <laughs> just just get down on the ground as, like, one of your fl- flurry of blows. You just go, keep going. Come on. Go. go play go, it go, go. Like that. Come on. <laughs> uh, all right. Last ability, 17th level. Hand of ultimate mercy. Your mastery of life energy opens the door to the ultimate mercy. As an action, you can touch the corpse of a creature that died within the past 24 hours and expend five key points. The creature then returns to life, regaining a number of HP equal to 4010 plus your wisdom modifier. If the creature died while subject to any of the following conditions, they're removed, blinded, deafened, paralyzed, poisoned, and stunned. Once you use the feature, can't use it again until a long rest. That's... (laughs) It, it seems a little like it's good. Obviously, it's a resurrect, and it has, there's no gold cost attached to it. Right. It's a good in combat nice. res. Yes, but it's seventeenth level, and I have like six other party members who can do this. Sorta. I mean, it's revivify is the only really in combat res, which is a third level spell, and that's what costs the three hundred gold. Right. I think, that's and right. that just still brings up. It's an action to cast, and it brings them up at one hit point. Anything else that's either longer action or they come back with um, penalties and stuff like that. Red sickness of some variety. Yeah. That's a good point. So this is a, yes, a really, really great in combat res. Yeah. The- I think probably the best one. Um, I might be forgetting some other sort of class feature or anything, but off the top of my head, probably the best. Yeah, and the fact that, for that you regain, again, 40, 10 plus your wisdom modifier, that's 22 plus probably five at that point. So 27 HP, just back up. You're not going to, you're probably not going to go back down immediately after that like you will with, with most low level heals and such. Right. Yeah, say so like Raise Dead takes an hour to cast. That's the next one up from Revivify. Okay. Um, and then you have what true resurrects, which is a ninth level ability, and I don't know how to spell resurrect apparently. Yeah, I couldn't vote it either. But also resurrection. Remember, can, the search is so bad. That's also, also an hour just, and a ninth level spell. And <laughs> right, you can just pop the dude afterwards. I mean, it's not your full action. It is. It's oh oh. Well, it's your action, and then as your yeah, you spend key, and so you can. You can, yeah, and then arm. Uh, you get the bonus action attack and you spent key. <laughs> <laughs> right, that's true. You probably don't want to punch the person that you just got up off the ground, though. You could if you want to. You <laughs> plus your wisdom modifier, you probably can go yeah, through that a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> Not when I use my hand of harm. You're going down, bud. You owe me. Bam. <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, it's 
you bring us a good point. And it also just means less reliance on a cleric. So that's obviously a positive too. You don't need one. It's just, it's very high level. At 17th level, Mm -hmm. it just, I feel like you've probably found a way around death, but this definitely is still good flavorful not in combat though yeah not in really combat. everything you're up right. to that point and you're either being revivified and coming back with one health right and spending 300 gold every time you do it or you're being resurrected outside of combat sure yeah yeah i guess maybe you can reincarnate them and confuse the hell out of them <laughs> which i'm sure also takes an hour and i think that i think a bunch so of negatives i'm pretty sure yeah also also an hour well, oh hey, no, there's no no negatives with that one. I assume that one would, as you get used to your new body, or have a disadvantage on everything. But I don't see anything like that. By the way, it's an hour, so it doesn't matter. Yeah, not not in combat by any means. Well, then I guess overall, what are what are some thoughts on this class now that we've we've really broken it down? It's definitely a really interesting take and direction on the monk, and I like that. Where it's not just like, it's a monk who has even more ways to do martial arts. Yeah, we don't need some healing and... Yeah, I think my only issue with it that I found is I feel like it's a little monotone. uh, Or I guess two-tone because it's just the, the heal and hurt. I, f- I feel like I'd get a little Bio-tone. bit... Biotone. Sure, yeah. I feel like I'd get a <laughs> bit bored of the play style after a while. Because it's like, what are your, what am I going to do? This turn, what can I do? I look at my character sheet. I can punch, okay, just like monks can. And I can either heal a little bit or I can hurt them a little harder. And that's all there is to it. Which isn't like a total negative. It's a strong class. It's I even like the flavor of the class. I just think the mm-hmm. mechanics leaned a little too much into the healing hand and harm hand aspect and i would have been fine if maybe the six level ability was a little less great and there was like a out of combat thing or like a i don't know just something else that was not just there better uh, but that's just nitpicking to be honest yeah no yeah they bring up a good point i think it would be every turn would be very very similar because like then the core monk stuff it's not so much impacting, other than what you get in like the first three levels, not really impacting your turn by turn choices. Positioning. You know, that's it. Yeah, yeah, you get like flurry of blows, patient defense, step of the wind, but that's all early on. And then after that, yeah, faster movement, slow fall, then yeah, stunning strike at fifth. I mean, that's always an option. And then yeah, it's a lot more passive stuff. Right. So I think you're going to you yeah. feel a little bit. I don't know. That's that's the one thing I'd worry about. In a long-term campaign, I'd probably get bored of it. Yeah. That's that, just a monk problem, though. Anytime say, a monk tries to escape its core nature, it backfires horribly, like the way of the four elements. This is a really good way to turn <laughs> the monk the direction it needs to go, if you know what I'm saying. Like, yeah. How do you turn your flurry of blows into something that isn't just punches? Yeah. And open hand has this and this has this it's right you do stuff with it yeah Yeah. you do it every round until you die yeah because i was going to ask what other subclasses add more interesting choices shadow but that's just positioning i think where you can like you know bounce around through shadows between like darkness yeah yeah um way of the four elements rest in peace um <laughs> i mean i guess the four elements it does have a lot of options just none of them are good none of them are good <laughs> uh way of the open hand i think is still kind of like the in my opinion is the most interesting monk class and like does the most stuff as you said you can do these pushes and make them trip and can't take reaction those types of things Right. Uh, so, you know, I'm I'm not saying that a ton uh, rework the monk in a way that makes them fantastic or super interesting or doing other things, but just because this one doesn't escape that doesn't mean it's not a bad thing. It's a right. weird, weird line of logic to follow. So I apologize there. Uh, and again, nitpicking. I think if I was playing this for six months in a weekly campaign, I wouldn't get bored of it. It's when I'm looking at like a two-year campaign and it's like, oh God, all I do is punch. Uh, 
<laughs> Maybe you get some magic items too. I mean, that's just like the yeah, nature of the game. Crisis of the monk. <laughs> <laughs> so it's it's the same reason I don't like rogues. Is where I feel like all they do every yeah. single turn, exact same thing. I run up, I get my positioning, I attack, I do a bunch of damage, and hopefully I can get away. And it's just like rinse and repeat, rinse and repeat. Right. Uh, or you do a range, and it's I bonus action to hide. Exactly. And it's it's not that it's bad. <laughs> it's not yeah. that it's not enough power or the flavor is bad. It's just I would get pretty bored of that. I think this yeah. is actually a pretty brutal subclass, uh, like anti D DM. It just there's just a lot to keep your party going in here that is kind of unique. Like we said with the Hand of Ultimate Mercy, like that's super high level. But right. even still, that's just, oh, I finally got one of the players. It's like, no, you didn't. Preach into the choir, man. We've had a life cleric right. now for, for over a year, <laughs> so. Yeah. <laughs> but even she, when someone dies, all she could do is re- revivify to one health. True. So you probably raise dead now, but yeah, it's an hour, so yeah. Isn't that where you bring him back as a zombie? That's animated. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. it, I've done the same mistake, yeah. <laughs> so that play style might get boring, but one of the benefits is you're playing a monk and you get to roll a lot of dice. And when I roll a lot of dice, I like to use dice from Metallic Dice Games, our affiliates. Right now, you can go to MetallicDiceGames.com and use our code MM10 for 10% off your order. And we, of course, get uh, a percentage of the sales as well. That's why it says at the bottom when you start the video, this video includes paid promotion. This is it, guys. This is the paid promotion. So go check out Metallic Dice Games. They have beautiful dice, and I'm not just saying that. Am I allowed to say that if I'm getting paid to say it? Well, yeah. Jeez. Yeah, we we have dice. From we them. do. They we do really, have really dice. Great them. dice. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Really cool. A lot of options. Perfect. And if you want to support the show, you can go to monstersmulticlass.com forward slash support, where you can see all of our links, social medias, and everything else. All right. And here on YouTube, like, subscribe, like, comment, subscribe. ring the bell. And yeah, that's the episode. I'm so glad there's music playing out during this, because otherwise, (laughs) just a lot of awkward pauses. Right. You can can say the thing. I'm sorry. Cut you off. All right. Thanks for watching.